You are now listening to The Perfect Prana with Kaya Ann. What's poppin'? What's good? You're listening to The Perfect Prana Show. I'm your host, Kaya Ann, a yoga enthusiast and a human. I'm just a girl. (laughs) If you like yoga, this is the perfect place to be. And if you don't like yoga, this is still the perfect place to be because I have the yoga news. The Yoga Heals, the Weekly Wellness Challenge. I have all the good stuff. But before we get into all of that, let's center ourselves. No matter where you're at, if you're in the car, you're at the gym, you're sitting on the couch, raking the leaves. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) But let's find our center. So sit up nice and tall or stand up nice and tall getting into good posture you know what i mean allowing energy to flow through our bodies effortlessly relax your shoulders relax your jaw relax your eyebrows and take a deep breath into your belly and fill it all the way up and then exhale and let your belly deflate. Inhale through your nose and then exhale through your nose. And as you inhale, imagining the breath, imagining the energy travel through each part of your body that needs nourishment and intention. I am centered. Now let's get into the show. Yoga news. This week's yoga news. I did not feel like talking about what was coming up on the yoga headlines because you know that it's negative news. You know that people are out here doing crazy things under the name of yoga. And I'm not here to talk about that. But what I am here to talk about today, the day that I am recording, which is Friday, mind you, the show is due, honestly, this evening. (laughs) We'll get it done, though. But the day that I'm recording, December 8th, is Bodhi Day. And Bodhi Day is basically a day where Buddhists celebrate the Buddha. (laughs) The Buddha, he was once an Indian prince, and he abandoned his life of luxury for a simpler one, and he sat underneath a Bodhi tree and he meditated until he found the root of suffering and he found out how to free himself from it. I respect most if not all ancient cultures and religions traditions because there's truth in it. So that's why I decided to talk about this because I thought it was interesting. He meditated for 49 days. He experienced nirvana, which is enlightenment. So when he meditated, he came to four truths, which is that life is full of suffering, dukkha. The opposite of suffering is sukha, which is easy, but he experienced that life is full of suffering inevitably like we're gonna suffer you suffer the day that you are born you know how you know how hard being born is like that's why babies come out screaming and crying because like it's literally traumatic it's traumatic for the mother it's traumatic for the baby it's like being born is crazy like there's pain in there there's a cause for this suffering and it is possible to stop suffering And there's a way to get rid of suffering. He also had an eightfold path to liberation, which to me was really similar to the eight limbs of yoga. (laughs) And that's why I wanted to talk about this. And it's something for me to review in my life. The eightfold path to liberation is basically like the ethical principles for Buddhism. It's just a way of life. There's just so many parallels between cultures. 
it's like crazy that Buddha had eight steps to enlightenment and then yoga has eight limbs <laughs> as well. So basically the eight limbs of yoga was written by Sage Patanjali and I'm not gonna go into too much history about that. There was like life pre-YTT and then life post-YTT yoga teacher training and let me tell you one of my biggest takeaways was to just be detached was don't cling to anything that was like the most like groundbreaking revelation for me is like don't cling things are going to change don't cling to the good things and don't dwell on the bad things because everything's going to change no matter what let it pass be at the center and that just to be in the moment Suffering is inevitable no matter what. Bad things are going to happen. <laughs> I think joy is inevitable too. There's things that are going to make us feel good as well. So to me, it is interesting that two separate entities, two separate religions, but have parallels with principles and so many similarities. And they have this, these eight steps and they're kind of, I like how they're written out like steps. Like first you do this, <laughs> second you do this, third you do this and so on like master one at a time this kind of made me think about do i practice yoga every day because i did see something on instagram where and i see people talk about this a lot like asana does not equal yoga and i completely agree with that and i understand that but then it made me think like do i even practice yoga every single day I practice some type of movement every day or some type of posture every day, but do I really practice yoga every day? And last week when I was talking about, I'm like, mm, I don't know, I feel a little off. Like I haven't been doing what I'm supposed to be doing or I'm not really on the path that I'm supposed to be on or I don't know, if ever I get that feeling, then I do have to kind of review my life and ask myself, have I been being present? Or have I been escaping? Have I been trying to do everything else but be with myself? Have I been staring at my phone like a zombie for hours at a time? And have I been, has my stuff been a mess? And I'm looking around and it's chaotic and my mind is chaotic. Or have I been neglecting my meditation or some, like, you know, because sometimes it is hard to concentrate and it's easy to overindulge in things. And it's something for me to do personally, like really look at and, and review my life. Like, have I been practicing yoga? Maybe I've been practicing aspects of it on some days. I'm not gonna sit here in lines. I've been fully living like this or I've been fully enlightened. Like, no. <laughs> and... And I don't expect myself to be. I have a lot of life ahead of me and a lot to learn. So that's the yoga news. <laughs> I am going to take a deep look into myself and I, I'm excited to get through finals and really have the time to self-reflect. You're listening to 88.1 FM WCRX. This is the Perfect Prana Show. On to Yoga Hills. I promised you a guest this week and I am delivering on my promises. And this week's guest, Cyan Evans Grayson. She's been practicing yoga for eight years and graduated from DePaul with a BFA in acting. Her mission is to help build community and encourage people to explore creativity through movement. Let's get into the interview. Thank you, Cyan, mm -hmm. for coming on the Perfect Prana show. This is my radio show where all I do is talk about yoga. I will start off by asking you what I ask everybody that comes onto the show is when did you start practicing yoga? Why did you start practicing? And why do you still practice today? Okay, when did I start practicing? It's always a funny question because after I like was started like practicing yoga, I guess officially, I realized I was like kind of always practicing yoga anytime I was like present with myself and my body. But I moved to Chicago about eight years ago and then I needed somewhere to go that wasn't work or school. So 
then I started just going to different yoga studios in Chicago, finding a work study program. And then after about like a year or so, I came to Yoga View and then did work study there. Uh, they did their teacher program and continued working there. Um, but all throughout my life, I always did like um, movement and singing and dance and all that stuff. And I had a lot of teachers who would do like, we would do like the Jane Fonda um, video when we were in like middle school to like get our energy out. And I remember that being like really, I don't know, I, I really, really, really enjoyed that. And I found the value of movement through that. And I feel like during covid there was a he, I, there was a lot of um, self practice, and so I learned a lot um, and was able to kind of navigate through that time using yoga. Oh, why do you still practice today? Um, because um, it's extremely giving. I feel like it is just the more I practice, the more I gain in self knowledge and joy and connection to other people and connection to myself. And it's something that I know will be with me throughout all stages of life, whether things happen where I'm grieving or I'm injured or when like amazing things are happening and I'm on vacation and like I'm feeling really good about life. I can always count on yoga to kind of like bring me back to the the middle. We're going to do something kind of fun. Okay. One, two, three, unpopular opinion about yoga. <laughs> Un- unpopular, oh wait, unpopular opinion that I have. Yes. I mean, this is hard because I do love music. I love both, but I would say music isn't absolutely necessary. I mean, abs- actually nothing is really necessary. You really don't need anything to practice yoga. I feel like even I'm, you know, working on this with myself, but like less is more, less is more, less is more. I feel like so many places keep like adding things and we're, we're adding more things that don't really need to be added and just have to always just like get back, get back to the basics. And I feel like we're getting, uh, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of um, distractions. Yeah. I would just say you don't need a lot to practice yoga. You only need you (laughs) yeah I love that is why I love yoga and it is something where I have kind of gotten away from like working out a lot or this is bad like I should I want to go to more yoga classes Mm -hmm. at yoga view since it's like I do this work trade I Mm -hmm. literally am working to take classes here yeah but the reason I don't is because, I mean, life is a little bit busier now that it's not Mm -hmm. summertime for me. And then also it's like, I have a yoga mat in my living space and a nice wall (laughs) and I have my body (laughs) and I just walk onto my mat all comfortably alone and just Mm -hmm. do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. nobody there no judgment whatever clothes you woke up in (laughs) no commute nothing nothing extra added and uh, and in the winter I think that is the best practice actually a lot of the times I mean it's nice to get out you know to see people but in the winter sometimes those cozy home practices are what the doctor ordered (laughs) that's been the struggle but that's my Mm -hmm. goal for December is I, I wrote down three goals for December in there. This okay. is also something I was going to ask you. I'm loving that it's okay. all coming up now. Yes. yes, I wrote down three goals for December, which was a three-day fast, mm-hmm. three yoga classes before I leave Chicago in December, and then mm-hmm. to finish my book that I started. Since mm-hmm. it is like the last month of 2023, so it's like kind of like you know, do whatever you can now, kind of (laughs) like, what do you be intentional about this month? Like, what are we going to finish this month? Like, what's something I've been meaning to do or wanting to do? Or like, I'm really going to try to push myself to do those like little small things this month. So that's Mm -hmm. what I wanted to ask you. Or what do you have three goals since we're in the last month of December? It's still the beginning. So it's It's not too late. But it's going to go by fast. It is. (laughs) So I have been like in like single for like two years now and I'm I'm finding myself getting like a little irritated and I'm seeing this as like I'm I'm really working on not seeing this as like a like pause in my life before I before I have a partnership or something and seeing it as 
this is this is life. This is happening. This is this is part of my journey. And so I've been really practicing taking like really, really good intentional care of myself. And so the three things that I kind of I'm like, hey, these are the three things I need to do every day. I mean, I have my like regular morning routine. And then reading has been a big one, trying to read more and reading at least 10 minutes a day. I, I do I already do this, but continuing to write three pages a day. And then the third thing I did write it down. Where is it? Oh yeah. And then, oh, sitting, a sitting practice because uh, moving is great. I love moving. I can do that every day, all the time, all day, every day, but sitting still for 20 to 30 minutes is like the biggest, the hardest thing to do in the entire world. So that's what I've been working on. And I'm blessed enough to kind of have the time to really explore what self-care is looking like for me, especially in the winter where it feels like you got to up your self-care game and uh, doing things that make me feel warm. (laughs) Um, So those are my three goals. The sitting practice is hard. Mm -hmm. And honestly, after my teacher training, I'm maybe for like a week or so after I was kind of keeping up with it, I was doing like 15 minutes, but then 15 turned to nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and, exactly. then I, and then <laughs> now every once in a while, I'll get back into it and I'll be like at least five minutes. And mm-hmm. then when you said 20, 30 minutes, I was thinking, I don't even have 20, 30 minutes to say that. But, but then did. I'm like, that's a lie, though. It's a lie. <laughs> Let me tell you why that's a lie. Because <laughs> I spend so much time looking yeah. at this for hours, just I sitting know. there, stuck, scrolling. Like I cannot get But off. one thing, one thing that has been really helpful for me in this book that I was reading, just talked about it yesterday. And I was like, okay. Thank you for reminding me of this because we know this, but sometimes you need the reminder that we are very addicted to our phones, but because there are thousands of people on the other side of those phones, making sure that we are addicted. So it's like, it's, it's, it's a battle, but also you have to remember that like, it's not solely on us, but it is, but it's not because it's our, it's our brains, but there are people who are like literally trying to make sure that we are addicted and they are succeeding. (laughs) We have power. We have free will. We can pry ourselves away, if not just for an hour a day. Very, very correct. And I'm speaking to myself. (laughs) (laughs) You're speaking to me. (laughs) They're geniuses. Like, they're... (laughs) I'm just a human. (laughs) (laughs) But I guess it's really kind of going within myself to, like, rise above my humanness. Yeah. Be like we are smarter. We are smarter than the phone. <laughs> yeah, like rise above my animal instinct or whatever. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. like look, this is like kind of getting into my higher self. Living in this world, no matter what you're doing or like what movement or plan or hobby, like you have to have a wellness regimen you have Mm -hmm. to have you can't exist in this world at Mm -hmm. least in america Mm -hmm. in this culture without having some type of plan or regimen or standard for yourself because there's a lot that's thrown at us and like it's not there's health is not embedded into the culture so if you're like like the whole point of everything is so that we don't have to think and we don't have to try or do we just order our food we don't have to get up we don't have to like we don't have to do any critical thinking to get our the things that we need and so so that we don't try we don't try to thrive we just survive because everything's already there for us so yeah wellness routine yeah (laughs) yeah in other cultures they might have foods that are like generally healthier and dances and movements <laughs> they do they have yeah. dancements <laughs> and movements and prayers yeah. already embedded into their yeah. culture that they don't have to think about their wellness it's just mm-hmm. a given that they're healthy and well like what like we are constantly fighting with yeah. trying to pass a starbucks or mcdonald's without <laughs> like it's it's like the complete opposite <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I do give empathy to everybody for that because I know like you literally have to fight for your health in this world. You have to fight for your health. Like, <laughs> you, you have to be a warrior, like a health warrior. I'll do whatever I whatever I want or I just mm-hmm. won't care anymore. And I've gone through that phase in my life and where I did nothing and I just ate that huge bag of hot Cheetos mm-hmm. and I just went smoked a bunch of weed. I did this mm-hmm. and not none, none of it. Like went crazy with it. And yeah. it just it's not helpful and <laughs> conducive it's not helpful. to anything. It's not helpful to us. It's not helpful to anyone who is around us in our radius anyone who we love so the last thing that i wanted to ask you since again it's the last month of 2023 and next year is 2024 and you know i say 2023 brought so much progress 2024 Mm -hmm. will bring more that's Mm -hmm. my like campaign yes so (laughs) i love it (laughs) i know like everybody's like uh new year's resolutions are stupid but i know right (laughs) what's your new year's resolution (laughs) okay my new year's resolution would be to in general throughout 2024 working on sharing myself and my ideas more not judging my creative impulses we're like we're entering on charted territory in the world for like okay we want we don't want to continue on the way we have but that means we have to continue on a way that we've never seen before and I feel like that's going to take a lot of creativity and a lot of sharing your your authentic uh, all of us our authentic lights and our authentic ideas and I think especially for people who like historically or don't share because they are going to think they're wrong or they just it's just not something that comes naturally to share that it's going to take like the, the quiet people the quiet people which is which is definitely one of me and I am one of them <laughs> so sharing myself more that's my new year's resolution mm, okay <laughs> well I can't <laughs> wait I mean thank you for sharing yourself with the perfect prana show with me (laughs) honestly because it's selfless you know if you have something to give you have something to say don't just hold it in like share like that might be life-changing for somebody you never know Mm -hmm. might be life-changing for you so (laughs) yes 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 and then Mm -hmm. the last thing I wanted to ask you before I hang up where can we find you at on the internet my Instagram is just my first and last name, Cyan Evans Grayson, all in one chunk. I teach at Coconut Yoga. So uh, the Coconut Yoga website. Yeah. And with that being said, before we close out, as a yoga teacher, can you lead us through some pranayama? Just like a quick breath, one to two, your choice. Okay. My favorite way to end class, which I learned this from my movement teacher at DePaul, uh, Christina Flutie. Uh, This is how she would end some of her classes. And so we'll take three breaths together. The first breath will be for ourselves. The second breath will be dedicated to uh, everyone we shared space with this afternoon. And then the third breath will be sent out to everyone into the world, seen and unseen. So we'll first exhale all our air out. And then take a big inhale. And first, just a cleansing breath, exhale through the mouth. And then we'll take the first breath for ourselves. Inhale. Pause at the top. And exhale. And second breath for everyone we shared space with this afternoon. Inhale. And exhale. And third breath for everyone in the world, seen and unseen, inhale. And exhale. Namaste. (laughs) That was so, so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. (laughs) Weekly Wellness Challenge. So last week's challenge was to write down three goals for December and look at them every 
morning you wake up or when, whenever you wake up. Just look at them every time you wake up. First thing you do, whatever, you, wherever you wrote it down, your piece of paper, you know, grab that piece of paper and look at it upon waking up. Did I succeed in doing the challenge? <laughs> do I ever at this point? <laughs> the challenges are so challenging. The next step is, is just to achieving the goals, but my goal is just to keep these goals at the forefront of my mind make sure that I'm thinking about them when I start my day just so that my actions you know hold myself accountable for my actions throughout the day like was that conducive with these goals that I've set for myself or you know how am I going to start achieving these goals achieving goals is important it's it's a confidence booster. This week's weekly challenge. In honor of this episode and the interview that I just had with Cyan, I'm going back. Honestly, I'm going back to where we started. The show, this, this season is about to end soon and there will be a second season of the perfect prana show when i come back to school in january so this is probably my second to last episode so we're kind of going back to our roots we're recycling a challenge which is meditation and i remember one episode it could have been the first or the second i can't remember which episode we're on the 13th at this point but I know one of those episodes in the beginning I challenged you all and I challenged myself to meditate every day for five minutes just to sit up nice and straight focus on your breathing letting all the thoughts pass and I did that every day for five minutes and now I'm gonna up it I'm gonna do that every day for 10 minutes I'm going to meditate Every day this week, Saturday to Saturday, 10 minutes. No questions about it. I have 10 minutes. And in my mind, I'm like, I don't have I don't have 20, 30 minutes to, but I do have time. And I think about how much time I give to Apple. It's sick. <laughs> how much time I give to distractions. But I want to start taking that time back and I want to start giving it to myself. I'm the main character. I'm focusing on me, period. <laughs> and that's, that, that's the weekly challenge. So yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in to The Perfect Prana Show. You're listening to WCRX 88.1 FM where The Perfect Prana Show airs Saturdays at 10 a.m. and Sundays at 9 a.m. Or you may also be listening on Apple or Spotify. So, you know, there's options, people. Instagram, I post videos of me moving. And I might share what I'm eating, and I might share a little yoga post here and there, and I keep everybody updated. So get with me on Instagram at consistently Kaya, consistently spelled with a K, Kaya spelled K Y A H. You all have a beautiful, blessed day. It's just vibes. Before I go, I'm going to close out with a quote in honor of. Bodhi Day. I will use Buddha's most famous quote and something that changed my life and changed how I operated and really switched some things up for me was the root of suffering is attachment because no matter what happens is that we have to be okay. You don't have that many options in life. Something happens and that's just being attached to the good things and the bad things and just being like if the good thing is taken away then that's the end of our life and then if something bad happens then that's the end of our life but like no that's not the case things just happen and that's just life and keep living it's precious it's a gift to live with that being said 
May the light and darkness within me bow to the light and darkness within you. Namaste.